Hello everyone. I'd like today to talk about the recent Quebec City mosque shooting and in particular the evolving response to it on a certain online community uh, that I'm a big fan of. Uh, so first we'll just give a brief overview of the event. Um, on the 29th of January, during the evening prayers at the Islamic Cultural Center of Quebec City, a lone gunman entered the premises and began firing at people, uh, killing six before fleeing. Uh, one suspect was initially detained at the scene, but was later released after police determined that he was just a bystander who's now considered a witness. The actual shooter, and I know I'm going to pronounce this wrong here, Alexandre Bissonnet, it's probably as close as I'm going to get, uh, called the police shortly after fleeing and surrendered, and it later came to light that Bissonnet was a far-right white nationalist Islamophobe. So what I'd like to do today is map out the response to this incident as various aspects of it came to light, uh, and we'll be thinking in particular about how these sorts of incidents always give rise to various conspiracy theories. And I'll be looking in particular at freerepublic.com, which is a deeply conservative forum community that I dip into every now and then if I feel like being annoyed about something. I'll also be looking at the response by the various faces of the YouTube channel Rebel Media, who I briefly featured in my previous video. Um, and before I get started, a little disclaimer. Uh, this isn't merely some victory lap about the shooting, you know. All these people thought it was a Muslim shooter, but then it turned out it was an Islamophobe shooter. Hardy ha, they're all wrong. You know, I'm not interested in just doing that because, after all, this is still a mass shooting and people died and it's a tragedy. Uh, there's an element of making fun of them, sure, but I promise it's all in service to an actual point here that I think it's important to make. And so, let's get to it, and we'll start at the beginning with the first breaking news reports being posted on freerepublic.com. So, this thread is the first time the incident was mentioned on the forum, and being an early report, it's very light on the details. You know, multiple shots fired, people feared injured, police have set up a perimeter, uh, and naturally there's no mention of the motive or identity of the suspect. And here's where we take our first step on the road to our conspiracy theory. The obvious Islamophobe reaction to news of a shooting is to assume that the perpetrator is a Muslim. Uh, this step is slightly complicated here because the victims were also Muslims, uh, which means we have to do a little imaginative speculating. An early comment from user TLI says, Multiple dead? Yeah, sounds internal. Might have been more that one popped their cork. Perhaps two families went after each other. User A Fool in Paradise postulates it may have been an honour killing, and user Wendell is taking bets that the shooting arose from the conflict between different denominations of Islam. Uh, so it's clear the kind of thing that they're expecting. Now, around this time, in a thread on Reddit about the incident, a user called the underscore GMD posted this. Confirmed on police radio, the two suspects are Bashir Al-Tawid and Hassan Mati, Syrians who entered Canada as refugees last week. Now, this isn't true. Uh, this is just some rubbish someone made up, but since it implicates Muslims, it of course caught on and did the rounds on Twitter, and made its way to Free Republic. User now approaching midnight reposted the fake names. Uh, now, they did charitably add the word unconfirmed at the start of their post. Not that anyone appears to have read it, mind you. Uh, user Red Wolf replied, and it's Muslims. User Lazamataz posted a sarcastic reply mocking the idea that the shooter could have been a right-wing Canadian, which of course, considering later developments, is rather funny. User Gold State GOP posted, I'm not surprised. Muzzies attacking fellow Muzzies, Justin Trudeau's children. They really don't like Justin Trudeau, by the way. User Little Harbour posted, it's becoming apparent that this is a Muslim-on-Muslim Muslim attack. 
Uh, of course, there's absolutely no evidence so far to support that the shooter or shooters were Muslims, uh, but so strong is this conservative Islamophobe desire to blame a Muslim that they've all already decided that it's the case. User Van Schoyten comments that if it were refugees, uh, this'll be good, uh, because of its political impact. And this is echoed by user Southerner from the North, who says it could be a game changer, refugees need to be stopped everywhere, can Trump rule for other countries too? Yikes. User Aquila48 says, what a gift they handed Trump. And then they write some Trump Twitter fanfic that has Trump gloating about the attacks. And user Yardstick says, frankly, the timing couldn't be better for Trump. And this sort of thing is why I really like Free Republic. There's no attempt to dull the edges of any of these horrible opinions. They're just openly being happy about murders happening, so long as it makes Trump look good. Free Republic is like having a direct line into modern conservative thought, completely unfettered by things like political correctness or societal norms or basic human decency. So at this point, there's still been no actual information released by the Canadian police, but that hasn't stopped Free Republic from having the whole incident figured out. There were two shooters, they were Syrian refugees called Bashir al tawid and Hassan Mati. They arrived in Canada last week, and they carried out the killings as part of some sort of internal Islamic factional conflict. Simple. Now, since this is all so obvious, we can move on to the second step of our conspiracy theory creation process by asking, why is it taking the police so long to confirm all these things that we already know? Why haven't the police confirmed that the attacker was a Muslim? You see, the next thing the police did was announce that they had two suspects in custody, those being Alexandre Bissonnette, the actual shooter, and Mohammed el Qadir, the witness, but they hadn't yet announced their names. And so, why not? User Mandaladon says, Still not telling the public who the terrorists are, which probably means they have Muslim names. And user Major Pelham agrees, saying that the delay on releasing the suspects' names is a dead giveaway at this point. User Kevin in California says, No reports on them must mean they're not blonde slash blue-eyed. And Desert Rhino says similar, Trudeau would use the label terrorist if it was a couple of white guys. Three hours without a peep tells me they're trying to figure out how to spin this. User Rummy Chick gets right to the point and says, Can't be white, it would have already hit the news by the libtards. JLB says, For once I really thought it might be some religion other than Muslims perpetrating the killings. The perfect record continues. Hmm. Outside of Free Republic, this is where we start to see our pals over at Rebel Media chiming in. Gavin McInnes, uh, seen here doing something incredibly racist, uh, commented on an early report saying, just need the shooter's first name, please, news. Ezra Levant posted, and then I guess retweeted himself, asking why there hadn't been any suspects' names released. Uh, then followed that up by saying, Quebec police just said he won't name Muslim mosque attack suspects because there are legal procedures. Really? Well, yes, really. You see, Ezra, there's a few actual reasons that police are hesitant to immediately release the names of people suspected of crimes, regardless of their race or religion. The first is a basic matter of public safety, especially with high-profile incidents like this one. You know, you can't come out and say, we just arrested John Smith of Number 10 Kings Road for this terrible crime, and by the way, here's a map to his house, for instance. The next reason is so that police can protect themselves legally, because what if it later turns out that John Smith didn't do the terrible crime, and didn't much like his name and face being out there in news stories, calling him a murderer? He'd have a pretty good defamation case there. 
and it's honestly kind of surprising Ezra Levant wouldn't understand the potential legal ramifications here, considering how many times that he himself has been sued for libel, several times having to publicly apologise and pay damages to people he's been telling fibs about, including a Mr. George Soros, funnily enough, and I bet that apology particularly stung, didn't it, Ezra? Now, pretending to wonder why the police haven't released information about the suspect in a shooting happens every time, even though this incident with a white, non-Islamic shooter should prove to everyone that the police always delay releasing the suspect's names, regardless of ethnicity or religion. It won't, though, you know. <laughs> Jumping to conclusions is just too fun, and it's a favourite pastime of all manner of idiots. Here's the perpetually outraged Paul Joseph Watson posting it, an even Twitter egg come to life Stefan Molyneux couldn't resist retweeting someone else, wondering the same. Now, handily enough for me, uh, the rebel media guys were rather sloppy with their initial responses and kind of gave the game away a bit. Look at the language in Ezra Levant's tweet, police won't name the Muslim mosque attackers, or... Gavin McInnes, who reacted to news that a pig's head was left at the mosque last year by saying, pretty sure these Muslims would rather be offended by a Christian than shot at by a Muslim, which doesn't really make sense on any level, but it is rather enlightening, you see. Like the folks over at Free Republic, Rebel Media has also already decided that the attackers were Muslims, and that the police were therefore delaying releasing their names because... something? Because police are meant to really like Muslims? I guess. Now, adding fuel to the fire of these speculations is an early witness report that cries of Allah Akbar were heard during the shooting. Uh, that phrase, of course, being the thing that the bad guys shout on the TV when they're being evil. The rebel media crew all tweeted out the Allah Akbar report. Uh, for example, here's otherwise uninvolved, amazing, brainless woman Lauren Southern chiming in with her obligatory tweets on the subject. Now, after the name of the shooter, and remember what they're really asking when they're asking for the name of the shooter is, what colour was he? Anyway, after that, everyone always wants to know if the shooter shouted Allah Akbar, which is, of course, the thing the baddies say in the movies and has no other meanings or applications at all. I kid, of course. So, the Allah Akbar witness report comes from CBC News in Canada, who quoted an anonymous witness calling into Radio Canada and saying that there were two gunmen with... Whew, look at that word right there. Where am I going to go with this one, do you reckon? I'm going to say Quebec -y. <coughs> with Quebec -y accents, who both shouted Allah Akbar. Uh, there's no identification of this witness, who could literally be anyone calling in and saying any old nonsense, but barring that, even though they were wrong about the number of shooters, they could have been right about hearing Allah Akbar be spoken. They were apparently at a mosque during evening prayers, so I think it'd be weird to not hear Allah Akbar be said, because of course many Muslims say Allah Akbar for a variety of reasons, it's not exclusively a terrorist phrase. And even Bissonnet could have said it mockingly, you know, it's not the automatic Islamic terrorist signifier certain people seem to want it to be. Free Republic user Civil War Brewing candidly shows us the real reason that Allah Akbar gets such press by saying, Witnesses said he shouted Allah Akbar as he fired his AK 47. Definitely a white Anglo Saxon Protestant Trump supporter. Now, this anonymous witness account will be important to the later conspiracy theory as it will be continually brought up as unexplained. Uh, which is because the source was an anonymous witness calling into a radio show one time, so, you know, whatever. Anyway, let's move on a little in the timeline now to the point where the Canadian police released the names of the two men they were holding. And one Free Republic thread from this time is particularly notable. 
because it's responding to an Associated Press article which says, Quebec City Court Clerk Isabel Ferland identified Alexandre Bissonnette and Mohamed El Kadir as the suspects. Police later said one of them was just a witness, though they did not say which. Now, if I didn't know any better, I'd say this was a conscious attempt to set up Islamophobes for a fall. We are about to get into some wily coyote shit here. We may need Sherlock Holmes to crack this case. Ooh, ooh, I know which one. Pick me, pick me. Which means Alexandre Bissonnette was the witness and Mohamed El Kadir was the shooter. Otherwise, we'd have been told immediately. If they're holding back the information, it's more likely it's the Muslim. The press doesn't protect white guys. I know, I know. Hardy ha, they're all wrong. Uh, now, unfortunately, the laughs didn't last all that long, as very shortly after that, the police revealed that it was, in fact, Mohammed El Kadir who was the witness and Bissonnette the shooter apparently having no consideration for how funny it would have been to withhold that information for another day or so. They have no sense of comic irony, the police. For example, Rebel Media, giant air quotes, correspondent, Gavin McInnes was midway through making a video about the fact that it was obviously the Muslim guy who did it, uh, which starts out like this. What was it, the same day? that Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, in one of his silly costumes, I think he was dressed like a Chinaman that day, says, hey, refugees being rejected from America, come to Canada, we have room for you. As he says that, shooting in a mosque. And as with all shootings, we have one question. As a Western culture, we say, what was his first name, please? Waiting, and it's Muhammad. Okay. But police released the witness before he could get it out there, so he instead plays it off like the police media narrative is changing so fast we can't keep up. All these new details keep coming out so fast we don't even have time to report on it. You know, apparently missing the fact that he could just wait for the full story to be out. So anyway, police release the Muslim witness and declare that the white Canadian Bissonnet is the only suspect. Uh, which you might expect to be a bit of a knock to the Islamophobe narrative here, uh, but you'd be wrong. We're not dealing with amateurs here, you know. If the shooter turned out to be Bissonnette, that in itself would indicate nothing. We have several instances in Canada of non-Muslim born or raised convert sympathisers of radical Islam committing acts of terrorism. Nobody should assume that if Bissonnette, then white supremacist agenda is a valid paradigm. Wait and see. Wait and see. Yet, yeah. now it's a white guy. We wait and see. Probably a recent convert to Islam. And I have heard reports agreeing with that. Anyone can convert to Islam and be brainwashed. It's an evil ideology. Now, the Islamic convert angle doesn't last long in the light of emerging reports describing Bissonnet as a far right wing white nationalist type, at which point you'd think the Islamophobes would just give this one up. It's a lost cause. Admit you were wrong, take the hit, and move on. However, I smell something fishy. Very suspect reporting to me. I want more information about this incident. Very fishy. Everything is so fishy about this. We just don't know enough about this case, yet. If this story was about an Islamophobe shooting up the mosque, we'd have heard all about it by now. The truth doesn't need time or delay. Something stinks. Now this comment is really something special. Uh, the exact same delay that was previously supposed to indicate a Muslim shooter has been repurposed to now mean that it can't have been an Islamophobe shooter, or we'd have already heard about it, even though we are currently hearing about it. And if we try and map out that statement logically, I guess we get this didn't happen because this doesn't happen, which is a pretty nifty, all-purpose, reality-defying argument there. Our pals over at Rebel Media are also reluctant to give it up, and hey, who can blame them? If you set up the website Quebec Terror and send a reporter and a cameraman to the scene to do a whole bunch of news reports, 
and get all your correspondents spending their time contributing material about it, and then the shooter turns out to not be a Muslim, but actually a white Canadian who doesn't like Muslims, like you, you must be feeling pretty fucking stupid right now. You are expecting to bag yourself a big tasty Islamic terror story to harp on about for the rest of the year, and you instead wasted your time and money covering a story that actually harms the narrative you want to spread. So they're backed into a corner at this point, frankly. They have to keep running with the idea that this was an act of Islamic terror, uh, which means they now have to argue that there was a cover-up, and the witness who was released was the actual shooter, except they're not allowed to actually say that because now it's libelous and they'll get sued. So all they can do is flaccidly poke at it with the same tactic employed on freerepublic.com, which is saying, this is weird, isn't it, this story? It's, uh, it's really weird. Isn't it odd? It's a bit fishy, you know, it just, it doesn't add up. Because this story is not even close to being done. Uh, it's just, it's so curious. Things here look weird. That makes this super weird. And that is not my conspiracy theories. That's not no. my speculation. That's me saying, what happened there? Dude, it's not conspiracy theory. These are valid questions. Yeah. And I just don't get it. Ezra, you know, we cover time and time again, media party spin, etc. But for me, I just don't get how we're really the only ones asking this. Yeah. It's so weird. We're going to try our best to cover it from here. I'd just like to highlight one segment of this particular video that I can't pass up commenting on. Let's take a watch. I want to know more about the suspects. I want to know more about the victims. I want to know more about the suspect's family. Uh, I want to know what drives a guy to go from zero to ten. A guy who has no priors, who has absolutely is not known to police whatsoever, uh, did not post hateful things online. As far as we know, we have one pro-refugees group telling us that he was known to their Facebook group as being anti-feminist, anti-refugee. Really, where's the evidence? So where's the evidence for Bissonnette being a right-wing Islamophobe? All we've got is witnesses saying that it's true, much like another element of this story. But I don't see rebel media asking for proof that Allah Akbar was shouted. An anonymous witness statement is good enough for them on that front, but when multiple named witnesses claim that the guy was a far-right Islamophobe, well now we'd like to see some evidence, please. Witnesses suddenly aren't good enough anymore when they're saying things that we don't want to hear. Anyway, so we've watched the narrative twist and turn and shrug off consistent attacks by reality, and frankly, anyone who's still on board with it by this point is primed to believe in a conspiracy theory. How could they not? After coming so far, they're pot committed, to use a poker term. I'd actually bet that quite a few of these people aren't really all that committed to the false flag, cover-up, conspiracy theory side of things. This is more just an ideological saving of face. It's a way to put a cap on the rather uncomfortable idea that murderers can be any colour or religion or nationality, and can even be someone just like you. It's hard to spot the bad guys when they could be anyone. It's much easier if the Muslims are the bad guys, they're typically easy to spot, if you catch my drift. So, if the shooter's a Muslim, then that's the fault of the Muslims, obviously, but if the shooter is a white Islamophobe, then it's a false flag conspiracy to make Muslims look good, and thus, still the fault of the Muslims. Which is a perfect argument, you know, there's no countering that. Now, before I go today, I'd just like to congratulate my old pal, Kraut and T. And why is that? Well, for this. The attack in Quebec only briefly seemed to gain wider media attention, and even less in our YouTube circles. I have often warned of making foregone conclusions over terrorist attacks when these are still happening, and this seems to be the extent to which reporting on this attack was limited. Brief announcements over Islamic terror, and after the realization that it wasn't Islamic, Silence. So well done KT for so deftly avoiding the trap that so many others fell into. See, I give credit where credit's due, you know, KT said wait and see and he avoided making himself look stupid, so congratulations. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching everyone, and thank you particularly to the names of the very kind people that should be scrolling past right now. Who are they? You might be wondering, well, they're my supporters over on Patreon, which is a website that lets you give me a dollar, or whatever, 
when I make a video. Now, I don't know you, uh, but I'm imagining that you're currently feeling a sense of incredible jealousy uh, that your name is not on this list. Well, that's an easy fix, isn't it? Just head over to Patreon and press a few buttons, and next time I put a video out, your name will be up there too. I myself pledge to support a few content creators that I particularly enjoy, and let me tell you, it's a thrilling experience, start to finish. Thanks a lot, folks, and I'll see you next time.